Hey everybody. Today we're going to learn a little bit about how to merge data sets together in SAS. Merging data sets is one of SAS's most useful features for the beginning programmer. Oftentimes you end up with multiple data sets. They all are over the same observational units and you're trying to put them together. Excel doesn't handle that very well. Databases do just fine, but Excel is one program that a lot of people work in, uh, but this is not Excel's strong point. And so we're going to do that in SAS today. Let's start off by downloading a couple of data sets. The data sets that we're working with today are coming from the equal, uh, I'm sorry, the equity and athletics data analysis cutting tool. And so what this has is data sets on athletics and universities across the entire U.S. And we're going to download the entire data files. Okay, so when you click on this, you can see that you have downloadable files for 2014 and 2013. And what we're going to do is just develop a data set that's a combination of this file, the data for academic year 2013 and 14, in this file, the data for academic year 2012 and 2012 to 2013. Uh, both of these files contain basically the same information, but they're from two different years. And so what we're going to do is merge them to get together so that we can compare values of um, institutional expenditures on athletics in total. There's a lot of a lot of additional variables in the data set, so there. If you decide you want to use this for a project, then there's a lot more to work with than what I'm, I'm going to do in this exercise, but this will give you an idea how to merge data sets together. So you just click on this and download them. They're in zip format, and so what you have to do is you download the file, and then you unzip them into a folder. Uh, one of the things you're going to run into, though, is that the name of the SAS file is the same for 2013 as it is in 2014, so you'll have to rename the SAS file, uh, something that would be easy to work with. And what I do for mine is I name the 2013 file uh, with an ending 13 and the 2014 file with an ending 14 uh, to separate the two in the folder. Okay, so once you've downloaded and extracted those into a folder, we can start to work. Now, there's two files uh, two SAS files in each one of those, we're only going to be working with the institutional level files. And so uh, that particular file has only one observation in the data set, in each of those two data sets, for each institution in the United States. There won't be multiple data, uh, observations. The second one, if you look at the school's data set, uh, this one actually has multiple observations for each of the different schools depending on the sports that are at those schools. And so if they have lots of different athletic um, sports that are available to their students, then each one of those would represent a, um, an observation in the data set. But like I said, we're going to be working with the institutional level data. And so I've named these INSTLEVEL13 for the 1213 data and INST level 14 for the 1314 data. And so we can open it up and just take a look and make sure it's all in there. You can see that we have um, an ID variable called unit ID that is a numerical variable for the institution. We've got the institutional name, the address, and a lot of additional information. Uh, and the variable that we're interested in is all the way out to the right side of the data set. Uh, we're going to work with grand total of revenue and grand total of expenses. Okay, so I've already programmed this up, uh, and so I'm going to be cu cutting and pasting information in here, but at the same time I'm going to be trying to describe each of the different steps that you're going to take in, in programming. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is make sure that we've got a live name statement or a lib name statement that locates the files in a folder in Windows. And so the, the library is going to be called sports. See here, sports. And that lab name statement says lab name sports. And then you put it inside parentheses. Uh, I'm sorry, inside quotes. 
uh, the location of that particular folder. And mine is located on my desktop in a folder called Athletics Data. And so you need to put the complete path in here. And so once you have that path, you can run it and you should be able to see the files that are available from the downloaded and extracted um, zip files. Okay, the next thing that we need to do is we need to modify the two data sets. So I'm going to copy one of these sets of code in here, one of these uh, sets of lines of code. So we need to make a copy of the two different data sets to use and I'm going to call mine uh, data 1213 and data 1314. And both of these are going to be contained in my work directory, my work library. Okay, so once I run this, I'm going to create a new data set called data, data 1213. And I'm going to set into that data set sports.inst level 13. And I'm only going to keep the variables that we're going to work with so that it makes the data set a little bit more compact and easier to, to look at when we get around to doing that. And so I'm going to keep the unit ID and for the sake of being able to identify those, um, I'm also going to keep the institution name so I know which unit ID goes along with which institution. I'm going to keep the grand total of expenses and the grand total of revenues. And so I put that in inside the set statement. So I set sports.institutional level 13 and I keep these variables just like this. Now because they have the same names for the variables in the 2013 data set as they do in the 2014 data set, we need to rename the variables in this 2013 data set. Uh, the reason we have to is because when we decide to merge the two together, if we don't rename the variables, the only variables that will be kept in the final data set after it's merged will be the last data set in the merge statement. And so we won't get a merged data set. We'll just simply copy the uh, one set of variables over the top of another set of variables because every variable in SAS has to have, have a different name. And so we're going to do a rename statement. So we rename institution underscore name to institution underscore name 13. That's the name of the institution in 2013. Now, obviously, institution names don't change very often, but we want to be able to compare the 13 columns with the 14 columns and make sure they line up correctly. Then we're also going to rename the grand total expense to grand total expense 13 and the grand total revenue to grand total revenue 13. We don't have to have separate rename statements for each one of these variables. We can just say rename and we say what the old variable name is and that's going to be equal to the new variable name. Okay, so we do that three different times here for the three variables that we keep um, in addition to the unit ID. The unit ID will not be renamed because when we merge those two together, we only need to keep it once anyway. Okay, so there's uh, our 2012-2013 data. Uh, and if I were to just type in a run statement down here and run this portion of it, we will end up with, in our explorer, we need to go to our work directory and we'll see the data set that I just created, the 2012-2013 data set. And you can see there's unit ID, the institution name, now institution name 13, the grand total revenue 13, and the grand total expenses 13. So there's four variables in this data set. Okay, what we need to do now is the same process for the 2014 data set. And so again, we're going to create a new data set that will be used in place of our original data set. So we're going to say data, data 1314, and we're going to set sports dot institution level 14, which is the original data set that I downloaded for the 2013-2014 uh, school year. We're going to keep the same variables, 
the unit ID, the institution name, the grand total expenses, and the grand total revenue. And we're going to rename those to values with the year 14 at the end. Okay, so institution name becomes institution name 14, expenses becomes expenses 14, revenue becomes revenue 14, and so on. And so now when we rerun this program, you'll see that this new data set shows up in our work directory. So we've got data 1314, and it has the same information, unit ID, institution name, revenue, and expenses. But why is it that we don't see those numbers on the end on this side? Well, if we double click on here, we can see that the name has the numbers on it, but the labels do not. Uh, the labels aren't used uh, to identify the variables, and so another way that we can look at this data set would be by simply collect the, uh, clicking on view and selecting column names. And so now the column names show the actual names that we've assigned those variables. And let's see how many observations we have here. In this data set, the 14 data set, we've got 2,075 observations. In the 13 data set, we've got 2,090 observations. So there's a different number of observations in each of these data sets. So when we merge them up, there's a chance, a pretty good chance that some of them are not going to merge. Okay, so now that we've got the two data sets ready in, what we want to do is we want to use the unit ID from 13 to merge to the unit ID in 14. Okay, so there's some steps that we need to go through here. First, we need to sort our data sets. The data sets need to be sorted by the identifier that we're going to merge by. And so here in our first data set, we're going to use proc sort and I'm going to identify the data set just for safety here. This is actually uh, required if you're not directly after the data set, if you're not doing the sort directly after the data set's created. So proc sort data equals sports dot INST LEVEL 13, and we're going to sort it by unit ID, and then we're going to run that. So proc sort by the unit ID run. And so that's going to take our 2013-2014, I'm sorry, 2012-2013 um, data set, and it's going to sort based on this unit ID. So when we run this piece of it, that sort should happen. And it says that the data set is already sorted, but um, it's still uh, appropriate to resort the data to make sure that both data sets are sorted the same way. Okay. Once we've sorted that first data set, we need to also sort that second data set as well. And so we're going to do exactly the same process. We're going to use proc sort, and we're going to sort our institutional level 14 data, which is in the sports directory, by unit ID. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm using the wrong the wrong file here. And so we're going to sort data 13, 12, 13 by unit ID, and we're going to sort data 13, 14 by unit ID. Have to use the correct sorting and the correct um, data set here. So we're going to sort data equals data 1213 by unit ID, and we're going to sort data equals data 1314 by unit ID. And then we're going to create a brand new data set and take these runs out because we don't need them at this point. Got one here at the bottom. We're going to take those two data sets and we're going to create a new data set out of it. And so we're going to say data, data 12, 14. And so this contains all the data from 12, 13, and 13, 14. 
and we're going to merge those two data sets together, data 1213 and data 1314, and we're going to merge them by unit ID, and then we're going to run this. And so this piece right here takes those two sorted data sets and merges them together into a single data set. Do not use the word merge for the name of a data set. The data set is data 1214. <clears throat> the word merge is reserved by SAS. You could name it merge 01, you could name it merge data or something like that, but you can't call it merge. Um, and so when we run this piece here, we're going to get one additional data set. I'm going to make sure they're all sorted and merge. We're going to get one more data set, which is going to be our 1214 data set. And this is going to be the combination of our 1213 and 1314 data set. And so what we should have is those variables for 1213 and those variables for 1314. And we're going to have the name for the institutions in both years. So let's look at this data set. I'm going to move things around here just a little bit so that we can see a little more. So one of the things that you see is that we have the unit ID in here only once. When we merge these together, one of the unit IDs will disappear from the data set because it, it merges together by this unit ID. We've got the institution name in 2013, and we've got the institution name in 2014 as well. And so if we do view column names, you can see that institution name 13, institution name 14, they should be the same name. Uh, now, the unit ID is the same regardless of whether these institution names are exactly the same. There can be differences in spelling in the institution names, uh, errors or anything that might creep into a text file or a text column. Uh, but the, the merged values of unit ID are the ones that show up here. Okay, so uh, for example, we've got Alabama uh, A and AMP. I don't know what that is. It's probably A and M University, and you can see that. Oh, that's an that's supposed to be an ampersand, and it's spelled differently here. So you can see, very first example is a problem in the institution name that the names don't match up exactly, and this is one of the reasons that you would rather merge. On a, file, on a column that's a numerical file or a numerical column because uh, people have a tendency to misspell or have different spellings over different years of data collection for names. So it's better to have a unit ID. Otherwise, you're going to have to do a lot of data cleaning before you uh, actually do want to merge these two together. You have to go through and be very careful about the spelling. Another thing is if we scroll, scroll over to the right, we can see that we have the revenue and the expenses from 13 and the revenue and expenses from 14. And so now if we wanted to make some comparisons, we wanted to calculate the change between years for revenues or change between years for expenses, we would just subtract one of these from the other. Okay, and so there's a lot more stuff we can do with this now. Okay, now this type of merge is usually referred to as a one-to-one -one merge. You've got one observation in one data set that merges to one observation in another set, another data set. And this file that we've created here is now the merged file. How many observations merge together? Well, we can't tell directly. We can see that some of them didn't merge when you see blank spaces in the data, like right here. Oh, that's not one of them. Let's we'll scroll further down. Okay, here's some. You can see that there's blank spaces here, uh, which indicates that there was no total revenue or total expenses in 13 for these universities. And I think part of that is because these universities were created, um, they were renamed during this time frame just uh, after 2013. And so this right here was a re reorganization of universities in Georgia. Okay, so not all of them merged. So how would we go about get, getting rid of those that didn't merge? If we were looking at only those that merged, we might want to get rid of the ones that didn't merge. So we're going to, we're going to move down here at the very bottom, 
and we're going to start getting rid of some of these values. And so I'm going to reset that data so that we can start working with this piece down here. So data, uh, data 1213, copy. Data, data 1213, 12, I'm sorry, 1214. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say if, um, and in this case, we're going to get rid of the ones that are, they don't appear in both files. Uh, in other words, if we don't merge these together, then we don't want to keep them. Um, there is a direct way that we can go about doing this, and there's a more elegant way we can do it. We're just going to work with the direct way right now. And so what we would do is we just simply say, if grand total expenses 14 not equal to a missing value, okay, and semicolon. And we're going to do that for each one, expenses and revenue. Because if we're trying to compare both of them and we don't have one of these, we're not going to make the comparison. So not equal to dot if grand total revenue not equal to dot. And we do the same thing for 13 as we do for 14. You just copy these. And what this is going to do is it's going to get rid of any observation that doesn't have the information that we're looking for. And so now if we rerun this entire statement, this entire merge statement, it's going to get rid of some of these variables. I must have misspelled something here. No, I didn't misspell anything. I just forgot to hit this I forgot to do the set statement. So we want to set this data set into the current data set. So we're going to copy and paste set and so when we rerun it with the data data 1214 set data 1214 this just copies 1214 the data 1214 over the old one and so now it's got a data set to use so it should work just fine okay and so oops I did have a misspelling it's supposed to be grand total expenses and grand total expenses so I need to put grand back in here. Okay, so grand total expenses, if grand total expenses 13 not equal to a missing value, if grand total revenue 13 not equal to a missing value, if grand total expenses 14 not equal to a missing value, and if grand total revenue 14 not equal to a missing value. And so now, anywhere there's missing values in these data, um, it's going to eliminate the observation. And so let's run this piece now for the third time, hopefully the final time. Okay, so now we have, uh, we started off with 2,099 observations in the original merge data set. And after eliminating values, eliminating observations with missing values, we ended up with 2,066 observations all total. So let's go back and look at that and see if those Georgia schools are still there, and they are not. Okay, and so any value that did not merge, or any value that had missing values in it, any observation with missing values was deleted. And so now we can make a comparison of revenues from 2013 to 14, and expenses from 2013 to 14. Okay, so this was just an exercise showing you how you could use uh, data from the web, uh, some interesting data about revenues and expenditures by school, by university for sports, and merge those data sets together. Um, hopefully you'll be able to use this example to do work in uh, virtually any other project that you have out there. Um, like I said, there are better ways that we can eliminate observations that don't merge but uh, we'll work on that a little bit later in a separate um, how-to. Thanks for watching.